chers collègues, nous avons participé euh, au symposium sur l'actualité des troubles bipolaires. Quoi de neuf au pays des bipolaires Nous avons le plaisir dans ce symposium euh, d'accueillir le professeur Guy Goodwin, euh, éminent spécialiste de cette maladie, ancien professeur à l'Université d'Oxford, aujourd'hui impliqué dans le développement de thérapeutiques innovantes dans cette pathologie. Et le professeur Chantal Henry, qui a co-présidé ce symposium avec lui, va donc poser des questions en français au professeur Goodwin, qui répondra dans un anglais d'Oxford, bien sûr, à ces questions. Merci Guy de vous soumettre à cet exercice de, de l'interview. Pourriez-vous nous, euh, nous décrire en fait cette magnifique étude qui a été publiée, dont vous êtes le premier auteur, qui a été publiée dans le New England sur la psilocybine, l'efficacité de la psilocybine dans les épisodes dépressifs With pleasure. I should explain that I am now Chief Medical Officer at Compass Pathways. Compass Pathways are the um, company who are developing um, psilocybin for use in treatment-resistant depression. Um, I will be making forward-looking statements, and if you want to understand the risks that the company faces, you should refer to our SEC depositions uh, in the New York Stock Exchange. So with that, just let me summarize what the study was designed to do. We looked at the outcomes in 200, over 200, 273 patients. These patients were recruited uh, at 22 different sites. So this was unusual for a phase two study in that it was quite large and it was quite generalizable because there wasn't, there were not too few sites who would have a particular interest in the, in the outcome. All the patients were treatment resistant, which means they had failed at least two treatments for depression, and they continued to be in an episode, frequently for quite a long time. In addition, they were required to be naive to, anti to, to psilocybin and similar drugs like LSD. And that we thought was important for the issue of blinding, which I'll return to in a moment. Patients withdrew from all antidepressants over about six weeks maximum and they were then randomized to receive one, ten or twenty-five milligrams of COMP360 psilocybin which is a crystalline proprietary formulation uh, which belongs to the company. The patients were then followed up over 12 weeks with a primary endpoint which we chose to be at three weeks. The result was a very clear order of play where 25 milligrams was superior to 1 milligram and 10 milligrams was closer to 1 milligram than to 25. So what we could see very clearly at the end point at three weeks was a dose response curve which suggested a drug effect of a conventional kind. Now why is that important? It's important because there is an issue with unblinding in these studies. The effects of psilocybin are very distinct. So a patient receiving a high dose will probably know that they have had active drug. Our design allowed us to say to all patients, you will receive psilocybin, but you will not know the dose. And we think that's a much better frame than, for example, having placebo where the patient will know in advance it's either it's all or nothing. Whereas if you're given a much more subtle preparation, it's more difficult. So that was a part of the, part of the design. What we also observed was a very rapid response, which was visible literally the day after the administration of the drug, and a sustained response, which we could see out to 12 weeks. So at 12 weeks we had between 20 and 25 percent, depending slightly on the definition, of patients who were in remission at that point. Now the implications of this study are that we think this represents a successful uh, phase 2b study. We were able to talk to the FDA um, about the next steps and we then set out a plan which we are now executing to look at the further evaluation of COMP360 psilocybin in larger patient groups. So, quelles sont les prochaines étapes, Guy? 
Um, we have two studies. One study is being conducted in the United States and compares 25 milligrams with placebo. We are doing a placebo control study to establish a safety baseline. And I should say that we found in the phase two study that the medicament was well tolerated. It was very acceptable acutely. We followed patients up for 12 weeks and we saw no important side effects other than evidence that patients were at risk of suicidality. We of course knew that because these patients have treatment resistant depression but this is something that will need to be observed in future studies because and a small numbers of patients were in excess in the 25 and 10 milligram groups. These numbers were not statistically significant but they mean that we have to be very cautious in how we develop the treatment. So the, the two studies, one placebo against placebo, the second one, which is maybe more interesting, is for Europeans anyway, is that it will be conducted in Europe. And the second study will use the same principle to compare one, 10 and 25 milligrams, but it will be administered twice because we think there is some suggestion from our experience previously that one should give two doses, not one. Uh, this study st has started in the United States. It is starting in Europe this year, and we hope the first sites in France will be recruiting within the next uh, six to eight weeks. So it's a very exciting moment in the development of this compound. It's a very exciting moment for Compass Pathways, and I think we hope that, that the results have the potential to be uh, important also in medical practice. But that, that depends very much on, on what we, we find in the studies that we're conducting now. Guy, merci beaucoup. C'était un grand plaisir, madame. Merci.